Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Don't Be Sad. You guys smile, be happy. I hope you're enjoying this series with Brother Muhammad Tim Humble. Get online, three W's dot MuhammadTim.com. We're talking about achieving that sustained happiness that every single human being on earth is looking for. Brother Muhammad Tim Humble, thank you for being here with us and sharing this beneficial information. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, I believe you know you covered, I know you've covered a lot of topics thus far. Uh, in the last episode, you talked about fear, hope, and love of Allah. Uh, very useful. And you taught us to keep a balance between those things in order to reach that sort of healthy uh, state of well-being and a healthy understanding of Allah. Now, let's speak about uh, the next topic, which is? Now, well, I thought that in the last topic, uh, we were quite theoretical in the, in, in the sense that we were talking about that principle of, of or those principles of, of fear and love and hope. I think what we also need to do now is I want to, to sort of take a break to look at real practical examples that build upon what we've talked about in terms of dhikr, in terms of the Quran, in terms of dua, in terms of fear and hope, uh, and in terms of relief from distress by okay. looking at some of the dua or, or some of the circumstances that, that, that happened to the prophets of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. That sounds wonderful. So we're going from theory to application. You taught us the theory. Uh, it, but indeed, theory is sometimes difficult to apply, right? So now you're going to give us some real examples from the Quran and the Sunnah, the stories of previous prophets when they experienced hardship. What did they do? Because indeed, they are our role models in this uh, in this life. So Absolutely, and I think that they, that that what we're going to do uh, today, and I, we'll probably come back to this topic uh, again and again. But today, I just want to look at a particular uh, page of the Quran from Surah Al-Anbiya, with addition, a small addition from Surah Yusuf, to look at some of the prophets and what they endured and and the dua that they made and the way th and the attitude that they had and in this particular passage of the Quran وَإِيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الضُّرْ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ضُرْ وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَذِكْرَى لِلْعَابِدِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ayyub. He said, and Ayyub. I remember the story of Ayyub. So this uh, remembering the story of Ayyub is there to tell us that there's a benefit in it for us. Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't mention uh, these qasas, these stories for the point of just mentioning stories right. <laughs> they are there to give us a real lesson okay. so wa ayyub, I remember Ayyub okay. when he called upon his Lord so here we have this calling and the making of dua and we okay. said فَاسْأَلِ if you ask anyone ask Allah okay. Ayyub had been afflicted with severe severe problems in his health uh, we're talking about uh, this issue of uh, the likes of leprosy, of a severe contagious skin right, right. problems. Uh, he lost his family. Everyone had abandoned him. He was in a state of, uh, you know, of really, you know, a real state of severe, severe trial. Yeah. And he called upon Allah. And again, we said about the word Rabb, and the word Rabb is quite significant here because it's talking about how Allah is the one that raised those prophets. And you know this word Rabb, one of the meanings of the word Rabb is tarbiya, is the one that, that raises, raises you up me, and right. the one that looks after you and the one that takes care of you all the way through your life. And he said, uh, He says, I have been afflicted by a hardship, or by Allah, a calamity. And this is a type of tawassul. And the tawassul, that this is the means of nearness to Allah because of course there are types of tawassul that are haram and types of tawassul that are halal. And all of the halal and recommended types are mentioned in the Qur'an and in the sunnah. And all of the haram types are absent in the Qur'an and the sunnah. Okay. So the, this type is to mention your state when making dua. Oh Allah, I'm in a state of poverty, so enrich me. So, okay. Oh Allah, I'm in a state of illness, so cure me. Oh Allah, I'm in a state where everyone has abandoned me, so help me. Ayyub says, Anni masani al-dur. I have been afflicted by a hardship, by a calamity, by a, a trouble. Wa anta arhamur rahimi. And you are the most merciful of all those who show mercy. 
Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is described here. Look at the hope of Ayyub. Even though he sees around him, everyone has left him. There's no cure for what he has. He is uh, severely uh, disabled, severely ill. Uh, he's, he's lost mm. his family, he's lost everybody, and he is completely alone. And yet he says to Allah, you are Arhamur Rahimin, the most merciful of all those who show mercy. And this is another type of tawassul. And that is the greatest form of tawassul, which is the tawassul by Allah's names and attributes. So saying, Ya Ghafoor, uh, forgive me. Ya Rahman, have mercy on me. Uh, you know, and so on and so forth. Ya Aziz, strengthen me. Right, using the name that's associated with what you need. With so what you need. He's in need of so mercy He's in now. need of Allah's mercy right now. Okay. And so he says, وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ right. And uh, the scholars disagreed over whether أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ is a name of Allah Azza wa Jal or an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. But at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful of those who okay. uh, show okay. mercy. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَجَبَنَانَ One of the most beautiful things about this is the fact the fa here is, it means ta'qib. Immediately Allah answered him. فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ We yeah. answered his dua. Right, quickly, immediately, directly. وَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ دُورِ And we completely removed all of the hardship, hardship and the calamity that had befallen him. SubhanAllah. وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَ And we gave him his family. وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ And then again, we, you know, an, an increase in his family. Again. Right. As a mercy from us, wa lil and a reminder for those people who worship Allah. Subhanallah. What is it a reminder of? A reminder that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, there is no illness and no difficulty that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can't remove, and that the help of Allah is always near, and that Allah is the most merciful of those who give mercy, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who answers the du'a of the person in desperate need. So that's just, you know, a little bit yeah. from the story of Ayyub. And I, I really lo love this story so much. And thank you for choosing this story to begin with. Because perhaps uh, many viewers who maybe are not Muslim, maybe they're practicing Christians. And they know the story of Ayyub is found in the Bible. Now, we don't confirm or, or deny whether what their story is correct. You're using it, of course, from the Quran and the Sunnah. But I think it's, uh, it's nice to let the viewers know that Ayyub here means... Uh, in English, his name is uh, uh, Job, right? Job, yes. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Just for the viewers who maybe are not Arabic speakers or not Muslims, so they understand who we're talking about. So this is a beautiful story of someone in, de in very desperate circumstances who called on Allah by his beautiful name and attribute, and Allah immediately relieved his hardship. And it's talking about that those two types of tawassul there, the type of tawassul of mentioning the state you're in, oh Allah, I'm in desperate need, help me, oh Allah, I'm sick, make me better, and to mention likewise the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So major things to include in your dua. And again, yeah. this dua is a dua to learn for those people right. who are in desperate need. need. You're in trouble, you don't find anyone else to help you. Raise right. up your hands and say, Rabbi, anni masani abdur. Right. You know, that my Lord, I've been afflicted by a calamity. Wa anta right. Rahim. right, okay. And this, of course, is the way the Prophet's not saying, uh, why me? Uh, uh, not being, uh, feeling like a victim and uh, oppressed and upset and depressed. Rather, he turned directly to Allah. And he was patient. And patience. He was, he was patient right. over what befalled him. And yet, despite that patience, he continued to, or that patience didn't stop him from continuing to call upon Allah and right. ask Allah for relief. Okay. And that's an important point because none of us want a calamity to befall us. However, there's a difference between being content when it happens and wanting it to happen. We try to aim to be content when something happens. Right. It's happened to me, I'm ready. I'm taking this on and I'm prepared until Allah gives me relief. Okay. But that doesn't mean we ask Allah, or oh Allah, bring a calamity upon me. The Prophet right. never asked Allah for poverty, okay. nor did he ever ask Allah for hardship, nor did he ever ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make him sick or to make him uh, his situation difficult. Okay. He asked Allah to make things easy and to make things, uh, you know, and to enrich him and so on and so forth. And then when the calamity struck, he was content. Oh, that's, so a, that's, that's a wonderful point. Th thank you, because that's an interesting point, because I, I, I have heard people... Uh, say, you know, uh, asking Allah to, to grant them uh, poverty to increase their uh, steadfastness. But what you're saying is not from the sunnah to ask for any type of hardship. You ask for ease. However, you are, uh, you are content, inshallah, when the hardship comes to you. 
and, and you, you use the proper means, and the proper means are to us, what you Absolutely. mentioned. Okay. Absolutely. Now, what about the other profits? I know there's so many stories that we can share with the viewers that are beneficial. We're going to continue through this page of uh, Surah Al-Anbiya, just skipping a couple of ayat uh, down to the story of Yunus. Okay. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَذَا النُّونْ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا فَظَنَّ أَنْ لَنْ نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَذَا النُّونْ The Noon is the, the uh, nickname of Yunus, the, the one of the, the fish, the, the, the person of the fish or the companion of the fish, وَذَا النُّونْ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا when he left in a state of anger, he had called his people with patience uh, to Islam and none of them answered him whatsoever, or a very small number if any. Uh, and he thought that his people were going to suffer the same punishment as the people before them. They've belied the messenger right? and Allah is going to send punishment. a punishment, a, a wind, or Allah is going to send something to take their lives, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send them uh, you know, uh, uh, angels to, to turn them. their uh, city upside down or something along those lines. Allah is, is going to punish them. Now, this thinking of his was mistaken because he had not received a command from Allah that this was going to happen. But he presumed it. And this doesn't mean that he turned away from Allah and ignored Allah and he went oh, away. Yeah. That not, not at all. The prophets were not like this. But that he mistakenly believed that that was enough. And so in a state of anger, he left, he left saying that, well, that's it. You know, they haven't listened to me. Allah is going to send his punishment. And like, you know, we hear from Shu'aib uh, and others, how can I be sorry over a disbelieving people? Right, right. And he left. And, he, and the meaning of he thought that we were not going to, uh, to, to harm him or going to cause a calamity to befall him doesn't mean that he didn't think Allah could cause a calamity right, for him. It right, okay. meant he thought he didn't do it, it anything wrong. Right, right. This is the correct opinion. And okay. some of the scholars of tafsir said different, but the prophets do not commit the major sins. Okay. He did not say that Allah can't harm me. What he meant is he didn't think expect that, he time. didn't expect that Allah would cause anything to happen to okay. him. Okay, okay. explain uh, this beautiful story so stay tuned Welcome back, you guys. Said, don't be sad. Before the break, Muhammad Tim Humble, brother, you were telling us the beautiful story of the Prophet Yunus, and I interrupted you before the break. I wanted you to keep that momentum going and tell us uh, what happened. So we got to the point where uh, we were talking about uh, that, that he thought that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would not cause a calamity to happen to him, and the meaning of that is that he didn't think that he he left in a state of anger. He wasn't thinking clearly, and he didn't think that he had done something terribly wrong. You know, what he thought was that his people had belied him and that he had, you know, there was no, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was just simply going to destroy them. He made a presumption and it was an incorrect presumption because Allah had not yet commanded him to leave. And so he left and he climbed aboard a ship and the ship sailed uh, in the sea and the sea and the storm became very, very rough and very uh, severe. And the ship began to take on water and began to, to, began to sink. And of course, they realized they had to throw things aboard. So you throw everything out, but still right. the ship is sinking. Sink, right. And they realize they're going to have to throw someone overboard. Off, ob overboard. And of course, they take, um, they cast uh, uh, lots, lots or what they would, yeah, right? Yeah, the, the sort of where you have like the you know, straws or something similar where right. you, you know, you, you sort of who gets the short straw, so to speak. Uh, and it turns out to be Eunice. And of course, they they do it again because they said he's you know he's baraka for us. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. he, you know he, he's he's the most religious among us. We don't right. want to throw him over, yeah. otherwise we'd, we're definitely yeah. going to sink. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So again and again, but each time it comes uh, that it's used. And look at his patience when he agrees this command that I'm going to jump overboard. 
and it's not a you know it's not to say that th this is not something to be copied by anyone because this is something that was specific to him as okay. a prophet okay you know, nobody throws themselves into destruction okay don't make your own hands the cause for your destruction okay but he realized this is a command from Allah that Allah is telling him that you must you must go, go overboard. overboard and oh. you must face this hardship The reason that we suffer these calamities and okay. all of this hardship is when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And of course, his was a very severe test because he did a very small thing. Right. And he had a very great trial. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> and, and, you know, there is no such thing as a small sin. But he re in Relative the grand scheme of things, it was a small thing uh, because it was not a deliberate, you right. know, sort of Action. effort to, to turn away from Allah. Uh, but at the end of the day, he did what he did and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him a great trial but of course he was a prophet so everything is magnified you know even the smallest mistake is magnified into right. I mean look at our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, abasa wa tawalla you know he frowned and he turned away I right. mean you know we probably frown and turn away from people you know a tens time. of times yeah. you know in, in, a in a day and yet this he's of such a high standard of character that even this smallest of things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala magnified it and made it a serious issue to to, to mention in the Quran okay. so this is the way of the prophets okay and so he jumps uh, overboard. overboard and he is you know taken by the waves and swallowed by a fish and of course the the Christians say that it was a whale um, the, the, the Arabic doesn't really indicate whether is it that right whether it was a whale or not okay. it could it could it could be a whale but it, it's also a word that's used uh, uh, right is used for a whale and is used for okay. a fish. Okay, interesting. So That's a good point. Thank you for mentioning uh, that because sometimes we just say the whale without really under knowing I, I that. I think that, it, you know, th there's no, uh, there's certainly a, a degree of evidence that it was a whale. First of all, it's mentioned in the books of Ahlul Kitab. Second of all, it's compatible with the Arabic words used. And thirdly, you know, in terms of your aql, in terms of your intellect, it may, you know, a larger animal uh, makes a lot more sense, you know, than... Rough, you certainly, know, yes. So, so I think there's some evidence, but like anything with Ahlul Kitab, uh, if we don't have a clear evidence for it in uh, in the Quran and the Sunnah, we say Allah knows best. Okay, so certainly. it was some sort of, fish, whether a whale, whale or a fish or some whale. some sort of sea animal that swallowed him. And, and you know, there's no harm in saying saying a whale, inshallah. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't think there's any harm in that. But I think that as well, we should be ca cautious to right. note that the Arabic, for me at least, from what I understand, is not absolutely uh, is not so clear on that point. You know oh. that it was. Exactly what kind of you know mammal uh, it was, although the words support that. So, he's swallowed by this whale or this uh, large animal, swallows him, uh, and he remains in the the stomach of the whale. And at this point, he calls out, "Fanada fi dhulumat." He called out in the darkness, "And la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al -dhalimin. This is our second du'a. This yes. is our second du'a. Yes, yes. And this du'a is absolutely beautiful. He says, La ilaha illa ant. And this has two benefits. First of all, the huge benefit of tawheed. And that the first thing that saves you from any calamity is tawheed. And this is a principle. Look at any of the du'as for getting out of hardship, calamities, problems, difficulties. They all, they all center around tawheed. The worship of Allah alone. There is nothing worthy of worship but you or Allah. Okay, this is our foundation. And it contains uh, tawassul by good deeds. The same thing that opened the door of the cave. That I'm testifying there's no one worthy of worship except you. you. And of course there was a companion who said, Oh Allah, I ask you by the fact that there is no God worthy of worship but you. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that his dua was, accepted okay he said that whatever he uh, that whatever he were to ask for allah would give it to him because he said oh allah i ask you by the by right. by the, the fact virtue by the virtue that there is no god worthy of worship but you okay so this is a key means of coming near to allah a key means of tawassul of getting nearness to allah and it is also the number one reason to be saved from calamities okay there is nothing that saves you from a calamity more than your belief in the oneness of allah okay and la ilaha illa anta subhanak so subhanak is the next point. And subhanallah is a word which we call kalimatu tanzih. It's a word that means, O oh Allah, you are perfect in every way and it's rejecting any form of imperfection for Allah. So it's almost like saying how imperfect we are 
but you are perfect. Right, okay. And the meaning, and that's why subhanAllah is used in things like when talking about the Christians saying that Isa is the son of Allah. Uh, Allah says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا سُبْحَانَ They said that Allah right, took right. a son, subhan. Right, right. I, how perfect Allah is and how imperfect human beings are. Okay. And so he's mentioning this. سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ I was from the oppressive people. And why is this significant? إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ It's very, very significant because it's a recognition of the role that our sins play in causing bad things to happen to us. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, corruption uh, and evil have appeared uh, at land and sea or corruption has appeared at land and sea by what the hands of men have earned. So it's recognizing that okay. the fault is not because of you know, something else. The fault is because of the sins that we did. Okay. So it's about taking responsibility. Yes. That now I'm taking responsibility for my own mistakes. I made a mistake and I'm taking responsibility for okay. that mistake. I'm admitting. So it's about al-i'tiraf. And i'tiraf means to confess. Itiraf. You know, and, and we're not like the Catholics who go into a confessional booth and say to, you know, the priest, who forgive me, I've sinned. Who is, also who is he? Who's also a sinner? Yeah, well. And probably a worse, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a worse fasik than the person yeah, who's coming to yeah, ask him to, yeah, yeah. To, to, for the forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> Subhanallah, we right. are people who confess our sins to Allah and to no one but Allah. Okay. So he confesses his sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says that inni kuntu min al I am from those people who have oppressed myself by sinning. Okay. And so he's effectively asking Allah that forgive me because this inni kuntu min al is the beginning of tawbah and it's the same tawbah that Adam and Hawa made when they were taken from Jannah. SubhanAllah, okay. Because the same thing is mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf when Allah um, uh, caused them to uh, go from paradise. Uh, they mentioned that, uh, forgive us, we were from the oppressive people. Okay. We were inna kunna min al We were from the people who were Oppre oppressive. oppressive. Br briefly, if we can just recap here, with this small dua, now he, he acknowledged the Lordship of Allah, the Tawheed, his perfection when he said Subhana. And, and he, of course, his good deeds by testifying la ilaha illallah and then, oh, and the then perfection of Allah and the imperfection of us and then he admitted his own sins at the and end. then he admitted his own sins and asked Allah to forgive him because the implication okay. of okay. the implication of inni kuntu min al is oh Allah I regret what I did right. forgive me yeah, okay, yeah so now what and so Allah says fastajabna lah we answered his dua wa najaynahu min al gham and we saved him from his sadness and his depression and the word he used is al-gham, which an al-gham is your, you know, when you feel sad and you feel down. Subhanallah. And for this, for me, is the key point in the ayah. And in exactly the same way, we promise we will help every believer. Subhanallah. So every believer who does what Yunus did and says what Yunus said, Allah has promised to help save him from his sadness and his trouble in the same way that he saved Yunus from his trouble. Brother Muhammad, in these days, we often think sadness and depression is something new, something modern that's cured, like we said, with medicine. But the, the, the story, the, the ayat from the Quran that you shared with me, the dua of Sayyidina Yusuf now, and many hadith that you mentioned during this course of the series, show us that, that Allah and the, and the Messenger, so to stem, and the other prophets, they actually use words in Arabic that correspond to sadness and depression. So these are this issue of stress and worry and depression and sadness is being directly addressed in this story, for example, and many Absolutely. others. Absolutely. But again, here in the story of Yunus, you see what was causing him his depression, not or his sadness, not the the word of the dunya, but that he had disobeyed Allah right, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, right, right. You know, so yeah. he, the, the, his, his cause of his sadness and his worry is that he's disobeyed Allah. Okay. And Allah saved him from that sadness and that worry. And Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ In this way, we're going to save every believer who makes that same call. I think we're going to need another episode. Uh, but I was about to ask you, we're out of time though. Can we continue this? Uh, this I think we will. Okay, we'll make a part two, inshallah. Time. We'll pick a part two. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Brother Muhammad. You guys at home, stay tuned for the, till the next episode, you guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.